one eternity later. Today on Thunder Bear Four Wheel Drive, we're back in the garage and uh, it's been a hot minute. I haven't made a video in a while. So it's time to get back into the groove. Today we're working on the utility trailer. More specifically, we're working on the lights. So if you're like me and you happen to have utility trailers like this or even a car trailer, you end up being the guy who loans your stuff out to everyone. It's kind of a curse. You know what I mean. So I get lights returned like that and they're all trashed. And so I'm going to do something a little bit different. We've decided to go a different route with the lights and we're going to make them a little more tough. So part of making it tough means putting something on that's not going to allow the light to get bashed around. So these are steel light boxes that I got, linked down in the description, so that we can bolt them to this angle iron piece right here and then not have lights that are going to get destroyed. And another nice thing, these are like uh, lights that you would find for like a semi or like a flatbed or something. So. If I have to and I'm in a pinch, I hit a truck stop, new lights. So we got amber indicators on the side there, red for the turns and brakes. Down here, I didn't want the license plate holder because my license plate is mounted to the fender, but it showed up like that. And I decided that I can get these clear lights that will mount on that piece and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on the license plate holder piece back there and then I'll put another one somewhere in the box somewhere so that I have auxiliary lights that will either aid in backing up or just extra light for whatever. So that's what we're going to try and get installed. But we want to definitely get these installed. The other thing I'm doing is we're going to convert it over to a seven way plug. So here's the seven way that's going to go into the vehicle. My Jeep has that. And then it also has this junction box right here. And that junction box is going to get mounted right there. And then I got plenty of cord that gets me up into the vehicle and we'll be able to make this original four pin plug go away. So, uh, Stick around and uh, let's make some magic happen. All right, so get the old light off. Had to wire this up just to keep it on the vehicle. And we're gonna cut our wires off down here. So that light is officially out of the equation. And this is what's left of the hardware that held it in. Now we got that off. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this other light out simply so it's not in there, which alleviates the opportunity for me to break it. So, being that this is all metal, I've been contemplating how I'm going to attach it. So there's this bracket right here, there's holes in the back side, so I'm just gonna drill through and bolt it to this. Uh, just trying to figure out if we wanna go high, if we wanna go low, exactly where we wanna put it. We wanna go at an angle. That would look weird. I think we're gonna go low. We'll just flatten it off on the top here. I'll throw a set of vice grips on there and uh, we'll go ahead and clamp it in place real quick and then we'll throw some holes in it. Level that back up. Mark that hole. Mark that hole. So now you can see I got a couple holes marked there. We're going to go ahead and drill those out. Of 
course I grab the dullest drill bit I have. Now I need to drill a passage through the side here to get my wires in. Just going to use a unibit here. I'm going to deburr the inside there. So I got these um, nuts with these steak washers on them so that they bite in and helps give me a ground so when we set up the ground connection on it we'll get good continuity all right it's bolted up there that is way stouter than it used to be there is no doubt in my mind about that and we'll get the grommets in and we'll get our lights mounted you can see inside here, there's enough nut left over that I can go ahead and put a ground lug on that and throw another nut on it and uh, get good ground continuity through the chassis. So I decided before I wire everything up, I may as well get this side completely mounted first. So tear this apart and we'll get the new light box put on this side. And there's the other one. All right, I got the other light uh, bracket mounted onto the trailer. So now it's time to get our plugs ready. So these are the types of plugs that you would use for lights like this and like this. So on here, the color schematic is pretty straightforward. It's not the same as the trailer lights that you're probably used to seeing. On these, white is always ground, okay? and black is your marker lights and red is your stop and turn signal. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take and wire these together and put a ring on them so that we can ground them. Then for the marker lights, I'm going to wire them together and make an extension with some additional black and red primary wire here to get out past the box so that I know I've got plenty of wire to hook into the existing trailer wiring. And then we can go ahead and pop these in their slots and plug everything in. So these particular ends are just uh, shrink type. They are not the solder, so they're a crimp and shrink, not uh, just pure solder. So uh, because of the wire gauge here so small, I'm gonna drop down to a blue instead of using a yellow because that should be enough to easily accommodate these smaller wires. So when I crimp these, I just give them a quick tug to make sure that they're not going to pull apart. And then once we heat shrink it, there's really no possible way it can.
extensions for our turns and brakes. So those are ready to go. And there's one harness ready to go. Plug in the amber light, plug in your red light, have your ground, and then your turn signals and your uh, marker lights go out the side of the box so that we can connect it in with the trailer. So there's one. All right, so it's time to get lights put in. And the camera battery died on me. So you didn't get to see me making a second one of the harnesses, which is probably not a real big deal. You were probably bored with it anyway. So um, I'm going to run these wires down through the hole and take and get our ground hooked up inside there. On this amber light here, it's marked positive and negative for hot and ground. So remember, our black wire is our marker light and our white is our ground. And then this one, it has a weird triangle shape. There's only one way that the connector can be plugged in. And no matter what you try to do to put these things in, they are pretty much a pain in the butt. Another way to get it in, petroleum jelly. Just lubed up the outside part, got that stuck in, then lubed up the inside ring here, and the light pushed right in. It made it a lot simpler. So every mechanic should have this in their toolbox, no matter how funny everyone thinks it is. All right, so now we're at the point of hooking up some wires. All right, so we've got a, a green wire, which is right here. We've got a brown wire right there. So the green wire is your brake and your turn signal, and your brown wire is your marker light. Your black is your marker light here. Tug, got a good bind on it. Get our other wire terminated. A little tug on it. Well, we got all that done. Just gonna take and Tuck our wires back in because the box will hold them. And our passenger side light is now wired up. So the driver side is going to be the same thing. I'm not going to film it, but uh, We'll skip ahead for you to putting the box on and getting the wires tapped into the box. All right, we got both the lights connected. So now it's time to mount our new box up here on this cross member. So I'm just gonna find the halfway point. That's 21 inches, so 10 and a half. And 
now we'll find the spread on the mounting holes for the box. Which looks like seven and a quarter, so we're uh, three and five eighths. box up here and apparently I can't measure but I can see center so we're gonna go with that That's not going anywhere. And here is our spiffy box with all of our connections inside of it. So time to go get the Jeep and pull it over here so we can plug into it. So I've got something that I can make sure that the right color of light is the light that I think it is so that we can go ahead and 
bring the existing trailer wiring up into the box and make some connections. So, all right. After an extended intermission, because I dumped my connector box and picked up a thousand gajillion pieces, um, I got a, went ahead and turned the got the Jeep backed up. I got it hooked up. I'm just going to verify our lights are what they say they are. So I got a black wire here. And apparently it's battery hot. So we're looking for left turn right now. Which apparently is a red wire in this harness, which doesn't make any sense, but okay. So rather than try to sort this out right this very second, I'm going to go ahead and terminate the wires that need to be plumbed back into the box. And then once I have that, then we'll know exactly where we need to go from there. Get me a ground wire here, so the ground is ground, ground is white, and it's even different than all the others, so we'll get it set up first. I should probably go get my ohm meter real quick <clears throat> and double check that ground here is actually ground on the tow vehicle so that I know for a fact that I've got that right. All right, so in order to check that this white wire here is the ground, or just to verify that it is, I'm going to use an ohm meter and I'm going to go from the inside hitch latch on the tailgate which I know is to the body chassis. And you can hear right there, I've got continuity. So that is the ground wire. So now when I go ahead and run that to the chassis of the trailer, I've got ground all the way through to both vehicles. And that is super important. I'm going to take and pop a hole through this grommet real quick so that we can pass the wire out and get the other wires in. And then I'm going to take this white wire and I'm going to terminate it to one of these studs that I just drilled through on the bottom. So there is our wire to the outside. Bring in our turns and marker lights. And hopefully everything reaches. I have a feeling it's going to be tight. So at some point in the not distant future, I do plan on running new primary wires down the rails and replacing those. Probably when I do the auxiliary, um, when I go to set that up for that extra light. So last night when I was finishing up the connections on the tongue there, uh, the battery ran out on the camera. I'm getting used to this new camera. It's an Insta360 Ace Pro. Everything in this video is shot with that. So I'm hoping it looks better for you. I know on my end it's working a lot better. It lasts more than the 13 seconds a GoPro will before either the battery dies or it overheats. So Insta360, you're doing something right. Um, Showed you guys a clip there of the Jeep with all the hazards and the tail lights on. So it's working and the trailer's done. And the reason it's a trailer video because I may or may not be purchasing a, either a side-by-side -side or an ATV here in the not distant future. So I got to have something to haul it with. So breaking the trailer out, getting her all ready to go again. If you guys like this video, there's a couple more to watch up here. We would love it if you would check those out. We appreciate you. We thank you for watching this video. Thanks. Come again. We'll catch you in the next video.